there's nothing quite as satisfying as planting a seed and watching it grow into a delicious and nutritious plant. What isn't as satisfying and can be oh so frustrating is watching that plant get munched on or ripped out by critters. I'm gonna share with you some strategies on how to best protect your crops without hurting your furry or feathered friends. If you've got a problem with blackbirds and starlings constantly ripping out every seedling that you plant, then put a lid on it. They tend not to trouble more mature plants like this coriander here. They'll go for the young seedlings that haven't formed a good root network and aren't anchored to the ground. So you need to cover them. It can be with anything. An old honey tub from the recycling bin or an old sieve from the kitchen drawer. If you want to get a bit more serious than raiding the kitchen cupboard, try the garden shed. I've got a good bit of mesh here that I've just bent into an arch. Great thing about these are, they go perfectly over a row. You can cap the edge of these to protect them from bandicoots and possums, but when it comes to birds, they tend not to like going in under something like this, so you're pretty good. Alternatively, if you've got a taller plant, I've made this which is a bit of wire wrapped around onto itself to create a cylinder. Just sit it over the plant and wiggle it in. Now to give this some stability, I'd put in some stakes or peg the base. Now you can cap the top, but I've found it's just not necessary. One of the best ways of protecting your fruit crops is by netting. Netting can be quite involved, so why not take a leaf out of an old organic farmer's book and use a bag? As long as the bag allows airflow through so the fruit doesn't rot, you're fine. This is a laundry bag. You can use an old onion bag. They work just as well. Another way of protecting an individual fruit like this is to cover it. I've got an old pot here with the bottom chopped off and the side chopped out. And that will just slot over the top of it there you go. <laughs> a good way of deterring possums is an old favourite here at the patch. Good old blood and bone. Now there's a couple of theories on why this works. The first being is that it interrupts the scent markings of the possum, meaning that they think that your veggie patch isn't their home. The other is that it masks the scent of potential predators. So they're less likely to go into an area, your garden, if they think that a potential predator could be hiding behind a bush to devour them. In reality, it's probably a mix of both. Sprinkle blood and bone around your patch and at the base of trees and shrubs that you want to protect. You can also make little stink bombs. Fill up old stockings with a handful of blood and bone. Then hang them from tree branches around your garden. This is especially effective when you have trees coming into fruit. Now the next thing is something that old gardeners swear by. Believe it or not, it's tea. And I don't mean sitting down and having a cup of tea, although that would be lovely. This is a variety called Lapsang Souchong. It's a Chinese smoked tea with a really intense smell. All you have to do is get a jar or a bucket, put a bit of tea in, put a bit more tea in, and then get some boiling water and pour it over to steep. Now all you've got to do is let that cool down and then filter it out and put it in a spray bottle. The mistake a lot of people make is they spray the foliage thinking that it's a taste deterrent. Now this has been tested and it's safe because it doesn't actually work. What you've got to do is spray the possum highways. That's where they're coming in from. The fence lines, overhanging branches and in this case, the apple crate. See, they have to go over the apple crate to get onto the apple tree. So. Spray the perimeter. 
So there you go. There's a whole bunch of strategies that you can use to protect your crops. Try one, try a few, try them in combination and see what works for you in your area. And before I go, no animals were harmed in the making of this story. See you next time. Thank you.